Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie from deliberatelycreative.blogspot.com and I'd like to welcome you to my second episode of Doodle Gems. They're an offshoot of the Zentangle, Zen doodling, meditative doodling. They're taking spaces that are left open and made to look like real stones or shiny glass baubles. They're a lot of fun to do. They can be very effective uh, in bringing a spark of something special to a special doodle. Being that today is a spring day and I am feeling very much in the mood for flowers and spring and sunshine, I'm doing a lovely flower I've already done my doodling to make the flower and I left my nice big opening here for the uh, gem. So today I'm going to be using mostly Crayola color pencils. I have a variety of pencils because the gem that won the poll for the first episode of Doodle Gems was the Fire Opal. And I... I'm going to attempt to do this. I'm not sure how well it's going to come across, but I'll have fun. And I think that's the most important thing here is that you don't stress, don't worry. It's just paper. It's just colored pencils, a little bit of ink. We can all do that. We can all do that. And we can just go with the flow. If it ends up turning into looking like something else or looking like an Easter egg, I'm okay with that. It's going to be fun. It's going to be pretty. So today I'm using the, the Crayola color pencils for all of my color. I will be using a white Prismacolor just because I like the creaminess of the white Prismacolor. I, the on my first episode, used the Crayola color pencils to make a really pretty purple gem. If you go up into the top right hand corner here and click on the i card that will take you to episode number one of doodle gems and i'll show you where i used the crayola color pencils it's the purple stone if you're wondering which stone it is so a lot of people then said they have a hard time with crayola color pencils because they're very hard they're a little bit scratchy and they don't necessarily blend really well together and that they have a problem getting layers. So there's not much more layered than a fire opal as far as all of the colors go. I'm going to try. We'll see how it goes. The other pencil that I might use is a Rembrandt Splendor Lyra um, Colorless Blender. I might use this. I might not. I don't know. It's just there, just in case. The doodle was drawn with a Pigma Micron 01 pen. I did use my Statler uh, mechanical pencil to draw my original sketch. At the very end, the shine is going to be put in with a Mitsubishi Uniball Signo UM153 uh, gel pen. This is my favorite white gel pen. It goes over all of the waxy and oil-based colored pencils really, really well. So I'm real tickled with that. There we go, that's the materials. Let's get on to coloring. And I'm going to try and do this live and not uh, zip along and, and zoom too fast. So I am looking at a picture of a uh, brightly colored opal that came from the Lightning Ridge and it was a crystal opal and it's a polished stone. Um, just go on Google and look up Lightning Ridge opals. Oh my goodness. All kinds of beautiful things. Now this particular opal is amazing as far as color goes and I am going to go in and just start laying down some patches of color and these patches of color are not smooth washy 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 patches of color there's a lot of crystalline structure to this so there's hard edges and there's flat planes inside and 
there's multiple well let me put another spot of this color because there's not a lot of yellow in this particular one it's got a lot more orange and purple but it has a couple flashes of this bright yellow then it has some orange that sort of floats along beside the yellow And you're gonna have me go quiet on you every once in a while and that's just because coloring makes me go quiet I know that's really a surprise isn't it you would never expect me to be a quiet soft-spoken actually you might expect me to be quiet and soft-spoken I do try to share that quiet space that I have inside my head. I will list what colors I'm using um, in the description down below. So if you wanted to try and replicate this little opal, if it turns out well, let's see. I thought an a little fire opal would be real pretty as the middle of a flower. The neat thing about this is that the fire opals, or the opals with the, all the fire on the inside like this, um, they change as light plays on them. They're not ever exactly the same. It's all the way light is refracting off of the minerals that were in the stone when the stone was being created a bazillion years ago. Now, there's this kind of soft gray in the background of this, and I want to lay a little bit of that in here. And this is not a true gray gray. This is, this is slate gray in the uh, Crayola range. What the gray does is it sort of slips in and the gray pushes to the background, which allows these colors to pop forward in a way that wouldn't normally, you wouldn't normally be able to see that without that restful soft gray in the background. Let's see, maybe a couple more little spots of gray, and then I'm going to put some color around those spots. You never know what you're going to get. I have practiced a couple opals just on other pieces of paper. They were not this particular one, though. This is, this is a first time I'm doing this particular opal. Let's get sort of a dark bright blue in there dark bright blue the paper I'm using is a very very smooth paper it's actually a Nina cover stock it's a bright white and it is really smooth it would be like um, using a Bristol paper or a white just a smooth white cardstock Put a plane going across that way. And one of the things that happens is that these colors sort of come right up against the edge of each other and they make new colors, just like laying color pencils. So I've got this blue and I'm pulling it up into the yellow and I'm getting this pretty green. And I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see the pretty green in that. I'll sort of pull that up just a little bit more. But I'm not going to put the blue into the orange. I might bring the blue right up against the orange. And what that will do, the blue will pop, the orange will pop. Because they're complementary colors. The blue and the, the orange will pop against each other. So I want to put in some of this sort of uh, magenta pink color 
And I think that actually is going to pull in real nicely right around sort of a snaky shape of it. So it just sort of cuts through. And I do want to have some sharp edges. I know you don't think that you want sharp edges in a stone, but you do in an opal. You want some sharp edges and my inclination is to make them soft and round and blendy, but you really, you want some flat planes and you want some straight lines. <laughs> it's kind of like magic, the way it pulls in. Now I'm going to grab, I think this lavender or this uh, orchid purple, orchid purple. An orchid purple is different than the magenta. I'll put some right next to it. We'll just send that along an edge. And I am not worried if I leave some little, little stretches of some white between edges. That just gives it another sense of dimension. without having to draw a white line. So I need, let's go with a real green. Let's get a green green in here. And I want a shock bright green right there. Boom, bright green. And some bright green right here. And I'm pushing, I am pushing pretty hard with this green because I really want the pigment to come off of this pencil for that green. I want the green to be one of my bright colors because it's a surprise. It's a surprise color. Look at that. All right. This is actually pulling together pretty well. Let's go with, this is a maroon. Now the maroon is kind of dark, but, oh yeah, that's good. Lay a little bit of that maroon over here with the orange, or with the yellow. Uh, it just made it a little more yellow. It did not turn it mucky colored. But the maroon, if you, because it's more of a purple base, it's the opposite of yellow on the color wheel. So it can cause you some troubles. But one of the things that people say, oh, I don't like the Crayola color pencils because it, they don't blend. Uh, in this case, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. They do blend though. They do blend a little bit. They're not, you know, they're not, they're not expensive pencils, but that's the joy of them also is that you can find these in the grocery store and you can find pieces of paper to draw on or cardstock to draw on. Old Christmas cards. Look at the back of old Christmas cards and you might find a lot of nice white card that you could draw or doodle on. I know that I just, last week, put away all of the Christmas cards that were left sitting around the house from Christmas. Yeah, just last week. I know. They were on a shelf and they look so pretty. All right. I am going to take my uh, navy blue, which is kind of like an indigo blue. And I'm going to put just a light bit of shading around this outside edge. Maybe tuck a little bit of it in here into the gray. Just a little bit. 
just to give a, a little more depth to that dark to that light gray that I put in just a few spots here and there tuck a little bit of dark right down in around those petals too okay now I am going to take this white Prismacolor pencil and I'm going to just sort of lightly blend over a few of these spots. One of the things that I've noticed about opals is that they have almost a waxy appearance. They're shiny. They have, um, but they have kind of a waxy look, a cloudy can have, they can have a cloudy look to them with just a few of those sparks, those brilliant, brilliant sparks. So I'm trying to not go over all of my deep dark color or my super de duper de bright colors. Yeah, I make up my own words, people. I'm sorry. Super de duper de is a made up word. I'm sorry. All right. And now I'm, I'm seeing this little area right here. And I'm trying to think if I want to deepen that with a darker purpley color. And that purp that blue is purple isn't it. Let's see. Let's just take the dark, dark, dark. I just want to get some definition between some of these spots just to give it a little more depth so you notice that there's a change in color. I've seen some pictures of opals that totally amaze me and I know that with practice, I might be able to replicate somewhat some of the beauty and the depth and fire. That depth and fire is all contrast and light, light and contrast. And you don't, I need to train my eye to see what those color changes are, what those shifts of color are, because it's, it's hard to see those colors sometimes. It's hard for your brain to tell you what those colors are doing. If you notice, I'm just going in, I'm picking up color, I'm just dropping in some, I want to brighten up this orange a little bit. So I'm bringing some brighter, fiery orange in. This is orange color that I was using. This one's mango. If anybody's interested, I will be putting all of the colors, like I said, down in the description. But this is mango orange. And it's nice. It's got a nice fire to it and laying it in next to some of these other colors along the edge of a blue or over a yellow is giving me, or even slipping it in along between a blue and a pink or a green and a pink. Ooh, okay. So what are you thinking, huh? Are we doing okay? Are we getting that? I'm not trying to move too fast. This is just real time. I'm chatting along and just doing it. Just looking at this going, hmm. I wonder. Yes, that is starting to look kind of opaly. There's kind of an edge on that one that I want to do. Let's just sort of smooth out the color a little bit without 
losing it too much. I do want to extend this one down just a little bit. There we go. And maybe up along that edge between the pink and the orange. Then I'll take that white one more time. This time I'm just sort of dragging it across and it's just doing that to pull some of the colors so they sort of diffuse a little bit, but they stay. I don't know how else to describe that. It sort of diffuses those colors. I wonder if the uh, colorless blender will help in some of these spots. It's, no, actually, I'm not gonna use that because the colorless blender, even though it was moving the color, it was also lifting the color. And that's, that's a little weird. So we'll just take the regular colors back in and just, it is layering. It's very interesting, this, the, Crayola color pencils, they are layering. They're harder to layer. They are much harder to layer. But if this is what you can afford, you can make art with Crayola pencils. These are not necessarily light fast. They're not, they're not artist grade. The pigments are not meant to last forever. But if you're making someone a card, or making them a little drawing to stick up on their fridge or put in a little frame to have it last them, um, you know, as a happy birthday, as a happy Easter, as a welcome to spring. I think that this is great. So now this particular one that I'm looking at has this lovely highlight that just sort of goes swoosh across, swoosh across. So now I need to swoosh. Swoosh across. There, now the ink is flowing. Okay. It has a little tiny highlight underneath of it here. And then there's sort of this little square. Square highlights usually happen from windows that are nearby. It has a little dot. And how's that, folks? That looks pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I might, just because I see a little tiny one up that way. There. Oh yeah, that sells the sparkle, that sells the shine. Now, some of those dots that you see, the bright, 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 shiny dot, that is just because the ink is wet still and my lights are bright. Now, I think I want to do a quick bit of coloring and I don't expect you to sit and just watch me color for the next 25, 30 minutes. So I'm going to color for the next 25 or 30 minutes, but I will zoom this up and make it go fast. So you can see what the whole thing looks like at the end. And I'm going to continue just using the Crayola color pencils. I may pull out a couple more greens or I may just, no, I'm going to take it as a challenge. This is a challenge. I am going to do the rest of this just with the colors that I've already used. Just with these colors that I've already used. All right, there we go.
All right, welcome back. So here's the finished doodle, all colored in for you. And uh, I only used the colors on this flower and the rest of the doodle that I had used in the actual gem. I uh, would really like it if you would leave me a comment, click like if you like this video, subscribe if you're not already, if you wanna see more of my videos, and uh, get out there and do something creative today. Take care.